light a smoker. I always just start with whatever's left over from the last go round. This is a, called a hive tool. It's basically just a, a prying you know, small crowbar. And you want the paper bundled up kind of loose and then light it right at the bottom. You want to Heat the whole thing up a bit before you start adding too much stuff. <laughs> what is that, wood chips? Yeah, but, uh, mostly I use just tree bark because it breaks up really easy. Yes. Maple bark is the best. <laughs> you want you even though you only want smoke on the bees, you actually want a, a decent little fire in there so it doesn't go out on you. Was you that wanna, a homemade contraption? No, this is a, a commercial made smoker. Yeah. And you guys will have to get some with your bees. This is like the the two most essential tools. Okay. Oh, I love the smell. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes like some, uh, some kind of pigeon, they smell really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did we lose them? Are they lost? Yeah, she was talking, I guess. <laughs> I honked, I called her, and then I thought she was going with Shirley. Shirley brought her, right? What? Ange? Shirley brought Ange? Oh, she, yeah, she's with her. Okay, good. <laughs> she's got to walk all the way here. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's the smoker lighting. And then we'll get some gear going here. So we've got some choices. Who's the fashion uh, person in the group? Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> you are? I, I, you got the nice sweater here. You This Ethan, one's, you put that on. This one's just a hat. Put it on. Good for you. Oh my god, I need one of those for hiking. You're keeping the speed up. <laughs> These ones work best if you have a hat already. <laughs> so good for you. Fitting these things, well, that's a pull. I'm not sure. Oh, that should work. So, the ones with the long string, you kind of get them around your neck and then spin around yourself, depending on how, <laughs> depending how wide you are. So, like around. All right. He he's in need one. Oh. Oh yeah. yeah he's in need. Good for you. Oh. Okay. Uh, hey, got the real traditional one here. Oh, he's a 
Look, that one's, that's got some miles on it, that one, okay? <laughs> so this one, on your head, and it goes around the back, for, uh, put your arm through here, right there. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> now. We'll see how how patient my bees are. I might need to put one on too. We'll see. So you always want to give the bees a little bit of smoke to kind of you're turning off the alarm system. Right? The, when they when they sense an intruder or a problem, they start making a smell to tell all the other bees. Look out, here comes trouble, arm the torpedoes. And so when you smoke them, you're kind of turning that system off. So the first thing you do is the entrance of each of the hives you're going to disrupt. Oh, I should also say, look, you see the way the grass is disturbed here? I've got some sort of predator that's being kind of combed out. Probably a skunk or raccoon is bothering the bees. Oh. oh, you can even see more here. On every hive, looks like. Uh, yeah, yeah, some more than others, but quite a bit here. So that might also, they might be a little bit oh, un yeah, unhappy with us. Taking the honey off uh, last week of August. Last week of August. So this is just to keep them through the winter. So what they have in them now is what they'll eat all winter, yeah. And so, so you can see the, the, the hive tool is because the bees love to stick everything together, and so to be able to manipulate them, you need to be able to sort of pry things back and forth. This is all honey or, or I've given them some supplements so that'll be included there too and that's that's what they'll live on all fall. You always want to kind of keep everything together so uh, you know I put it on the lid. See we can't get into this hive a bit. So here we have uh, this, and it's this is honey, but this cap stuff here is actually young bees. The, like bees are insects, the same life cycle as a mosquito or anything else, right? Uh, egg, larvae, pupae, spin a cocoon, adult, right? So, but honey bees just do that inside that comb. So underneath one of these brown kind of cells is a is a pupae of a of a bee. And in the summer, it's just the whole thing will be young bees. Uh, I'm walk into and here, there's quite a lot. Oh, here's our queen, right there. Oh, yeah, big one. Yeah. Does she always sit at like the middle of the five? Uh, she tends to, yeah. 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 Is yeah. there just one queen for like There's the whole thing? Typically one queen. It sometimes can be like a mother-daughter, so a transition. Is, but is it true if the queen dies, all the rest of the bees kind of like, no uh, I don't know if it's not know what to do as much as there won't be anything to do. Like the hive is all about looking after the young bees and feeding. Uh, the, uh, once the eggs hatch, feeding the larvae. So once the, there's no queen, then that process breaks down. Right. So then there is nothing to do, and they are certainly uh, 
like if you, if that queen, it was a summer day and a queen somehow jumps off of a frame and gets, that's why I'm sort of careful about keeping the frame where I know where it is. So if she, if the queen had been on there and she'd fallen off, I'd know where to look for her. And you sometimes see, you know, all of a sudden there'll be a big bunch of bees and they, they found that their queen is there. So why would she move her own like that? So that's all she does all day. She basically is kind of on constant patrol. Oh. She's walking over those combs, yeah. and if she finds a, one of these cells, one of those tubes, that is ready to have an egg laid in it, she puts an egg in. And so she's just, and so she's kind of walking along, sticking her head in, yeah. going, right? So here she says, this is all good, this is done, this is done, keep moving. And she's just constantly searching for, basically for work. Wow, I always thought that they just, she just stood there and went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's only what European queens do. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the other kind of colonizer. Uh, so this, this hive still has quite a bit of brood in it. It's a very weird year. Like it's been warm so late and fresh pollen and flowers. So I was curious to know how much brood there would be in here. There's in fact still eggs in those cells there. Um, we, we'll have to be careful here. Like I don't want to chill this off, so it has to kind of stay warm here. And anyone who wants to come and have a quick look, just come on one at a time and lean in and you'll see eggs in the bottom. <laughs> Oh my goodness! That's so beautiful! Okay. That is so cool! Do they have so much? A little light, almost like a grain of rice, but half the size of the tail. So you have to come and look really real quick and write down the issue. Right? I need to go get my camera. So if you see, when you, you look at a hive and you can see the eggs, then you know the queen is good to go and everything's working fine. If you get a hive and you don't find eggs, then you have a problem. So that's why I'm keen to have everyone see what they look like. So well, you can see the kind of a white glisten there. Those are the lar those are larvae, and then even smaller in here, a little like half the size of the red. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are the young bees. You betcha. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? I didn't know that. Yeah, come have a look. Did you do it? Yep. All right, is there a? No, Justin. I'm getting in there. Wait, so those slimy? Yeah, those are the larvae. Uh, right? Those are kind of grubs, right? right. Except, but down right in here, I think there's some eggs. They're not, they're not shiny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, they're eggs. <laughs> I have a bad hair day today. <laughs> I mean, like, I take the honey. Yeah. That's for a while. Ago. They oh, love really? you, right? Right? I mean, so they really, really like you. Like now. Is it, you have so many bees on you. These are uh, pesticide strips, and they're due to come out, so I'm going to take them out when I got this. <laughs> and why pesticide yeah. strips? Because there's mites. It's actually a mite <laughs> Oh, no, he's still in the way. So there's, there's these boa mites that are really wicked. They'll, okay. they'll they'll kill your hives in no time. So you gotta you gotta control them. So you would recommend you it's almost compulsory. So if we do bees, we should get these minus hives. Definitely. And now there's different. There's organic ones and, and synthetic ones. There's also, yeah. there's good choices. Uh -huh. And you have to decide what's right for your for your practices. Like the machine on the back of the truck there is a organic fumigator. Okay. So I can uh, I have some hives that I'm I'm not treating synthetic that I'm. But it's much more labor intensive. And you have a smoke attached to the. 
will be like all winter okay. right so it'll be there there uh, like I and mean, that's great like most insects in our environment do go into a dormant stage honeybees are not from this environment right they're actually from the Mediterranean area and so they're used to an environment that's kind of goes has peaks and valleys of, of abundance for honey like it you know in you know, Greece or in, in Egypt or whatever like it's warm almost the same temperature all the time but it can be terribly dry and nothing grows and then you get two inches of rain and it just blossoms into incredible beauty and so honeybees have evolved to kind of be always ready to pounce whenever the environment yields right and they store as much honey as they can and they go into kind of a low energy uh, state waiting for the next opportunity but they never go completely dormant whereas in our environment most of our insects like bumblebees or mosquitoes they'll wait for the right environmental conditions right a bumblebee you know depending on the species will nest you know so many inches below ground level and by the time the ground thaws down to that level and they can incubate and hatch the the flowers that they're ready wanting to forage on are in blue right so if you're if you're a bumblebee wanting to get dandelions uh, you know, you want to be pretty close to the surface because that's an, an early spring. Whereas if you want to have, uh, you know, uh, what's it, July flower, like Salphus or something, right, then you would probably be a species that nested deeper in the ground and it would be quite a while before the ground warmed up enough for your egg to hatch. But the adults never transition from year to year. Okay, so very specialized. Yeah, so like, the, there's thousands of species of bee in that letter indigenous to Manitoba. The, these honeybees are actually uh, an, uh, an introduced species. So we'll just look at one more just to see. When in bees you always want to look at more than one hive so you know what normal is. So we're just going to look open this and compare it and that, getting that first frame out without crushing a lot of bees. You kind of want to wiggle it back and forth very gently so that the bees don't jam up on each other. Um, we can we can taste this. Can we? Oh, that's so good when you have the wax and the honey together. Have you guys had that? How much more than bumblebees? Oh, bumblebees don't really make surplus honey. Okay. Right? They make, so they, they make honey. They feed themselves, but they don't create extra. So you guys can just go like that. Ooh. Okay. Take, take a little, pass it around. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's so nice of oh. you, Phil. Okay. So oh. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's heavy. Like it's not too heavy, but I couldn't hold it with. Oh, a little bit like that? Oh my goodness, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> If there's brood, brood is what we call the young, the a young bees. Bee. Go, go for a hand. Be a, pretend you're a bear. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bear here. <laughs> you are a bear. <laughs> that, so how's that, Jamie? And Jamie is a bear. So. <laughs> Um, you can have some, last depending on how complicated you 
want one. Yeah, I want one. Um, like the jackets are, in my opinion, the best. Um, but, uh, they don't. Ha you don't have bees kind of crawling up under the same way. See, this is what bears do. <laughs> I thought I saw a drone here somewhere, but uh, I must have run away on me. So the drones are the males. Oh, there's one. Oh, a couple here. Okay. These big burly ones. Now, they're good for one thing. And that's exactly what sometimes all the men are good for too. Uh, and so they're a bit of a luxury item. The, the, the hive is, all the work is done by the females, the queen and the workers. In the fall, once there's no more need for mating, then the, the hives will stop feeding the males and they're so useless they can't even feed themselves. And they, they just leave the hive and die, right? So it's there can be a lot of males in the hive so in the summertime. Right? I think it's only <laughs> only because we've had such crazy warm weather that there's still be any males left at all. Yeah. yeah. So the ones that have the like the black. Yeah. Well, the bottoms, they don't have to be black, but they're no? much larger, they're right? They're larger. Okay. That, and they also don't stink. Well, yeah. So if you want to practice really? handling bees, they're a good thing to start with. You can you can grab them. Yeah. Well, they don't sting. So they don't sting. They don't bite. <laughs> Good, good question. You thought there was like a a, a secret. Uh, one to the other. They just like yeah. <laughs> there was another one here somewhere. They just judge you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's one. Who who else wants to grab it here? There you go. Okay. So with the mother bee or the queen bee, is there like a royal family that they come from or something? Uh, no. So, so she's just the daughter of the previous queen. Oh, okay. Right? And she's typically. And all the other bees are her daughters. Oh, like all of these bees are her daughters. She's laid every, at this time of year especially. <laughs> dumb, 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 at this time of year, all the bees in this hive are her sons and her daughters. Oh, okay. She lays thousands of eggs every day. So she's the princess. So, and they're all princesses. It's, yeah. And princes. And like, we use the word queen. But that's not like a power word the way it is for people, right? She doesn't get tea served on silver. Uh, she might even be the hardest working bee in the world. But she's the one special one, and so that's why we use that word. So there's only one queen? Typically there's one queen and then all the rest of the hive have our, our specialized foragers and workers. Now, because it's cold, I want to make sure these girls get back in before I close it up here. So they're maintaining like a, a warm <laughs> habitat for themselves inside of their, with their own body heat. And that's why I have this, this little bit of insulation to help them keep warm. And then the lid, close them up. Each of these is, is a high, right? Uh, you guys will probably just have hives on individual stands. You won't have more clustered on pallets. I do this just for the convenience of the forklift and I, when I'm moving them. But, and how uh, often do you move them? Well, they'll shortly be all going home for winter, and right? I winter them inside. Okay. Yeah. And you have a good survival rate? <laughs> <laughs>